All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Paul Harris. I'm the Executive Director of Development for the Institute of Veterans and Military Families, the IVMF, uh, as well as the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs, which we call the OVMA. I'd like to welcome you to today's virtual session to learn more about why Syracuse University is the best place for veterans. A few housekeeping notes for the group. Uh, please know that this session will be recorded. All participants will be muted to ensure that there's no background noise to, or any distractions. If you do have any questions for Ron during the session, please type them into the chat box to the right of the screen, and we'll answer those questions towards the end of the session and try to get to as many as possible. Uh, now to begin. Our presenter is the Executive Director of the Office of Veterans and Military Affairs, retired Colonel Ron Novak. Ron has served as the Executive Director of the OVMA at Syracuse University since 2015. He leads a campus portfolio responsible for all programs and initiatives related to supporting the military connected students, family members, and faculty and staff veteran workforce at the university. Prior to his arrival at, at Syracuse University, Ron served 33 years on active duty in the United States Army, commanding at every level, culminating as a brigade commander in the 3rd Infantry Division. He served in the 101st Airborne Division, the 82nd Airborne Division, 10th Mountain Division, 3rd Infantry Division, and U.S. Special Operations Command. Ron deployed to Afghanistan and Iraq five times. He holds a bachelor's in business management from the University of Maryland, MBA from Embry-Riddle Embry Aeronautical University, and a master's from the National Resource Strategy at the National Defense University in Washington, D.C. Everyone, thanks again for joining us today. And Ron, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Paul. I really appreciate it. And uh, everyone who's uh, joining today, th thank you very much. I, I hope that uh, all of uh, you and your families are, are safe and healthy in these uh, very unprecedented times uh, here in the United States. Um, you know, before I get started, I, I would really like to uh, uh, send a little special shout out to uh, so, some people that are joining us today. Uh, the, the OVMA Board of Advisors, I see a number uh, of our advisors on there. Thank you for attending and supporting us. Uh, I see a, a number of uh, Veteran Legacy Fund uh, members. Uh, thank you for attending, as well as a lot of alums that, you know, across the nation and, and overseas. Uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, a very special group uh, uh, that's also with us. Uh, then the Army Comptroller Program uh, and today the uh, Defense Comptroller Program uh, alums. Thank you uh, for, for joining us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, and, and uh, share my screen with a uh, with a slide deck to to uh, help us uh, walk through today's presentation. So uh, to really get started, uh, you got to understand why Syracuse University, uh, as as we traverse across uh, the United States and, and talk to our peer institutions at different conferences or even one on one on on different calls, they ask us why Syracuse University, what makes us so unique? And and really, you have to take a step back in time to, uh, to 1918. Uh, th this is the uh, the Student Army Training Corps, which was the uh, the precursor to, to Army ROTC. Two times in our uh, university's history was the campus mobilized. First was in World War I, and then the second time in World War II. Uh, the Student Army Training Corps, uh, there is a gentleman that's in, in this picture, uh, and, and he later on became uh, our Chancellor and President, which is uh, William Pearson Tully. He was a cadet back in 1918. But during uh, World War II, uh, Chancellor William Pearson Tully and a number of other chancellors and presidents were asked to come to Washington, D.C. to figure out uh, what to do with uh, the all the returning World War II veterans from both the European and the Pacific theaters. Uh, and what popped out of that session was uh, what we know as the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, or the original post, uh, or the original uh, GI Bill. Uh, at the time, Syracuse University uh, had a um, an enrollment of about between four and 5,000 students here on campus. and and, and Chancellor uh, Tully made a strategic decision. He, 
he opened the doors wide open to any returning World War II veteran to come to Syracuse University, whether they had a high school degree or not. He partnered with local uh, high schools to to get these uh, veterans uh, through and, and to achieve their GED and then uh, uh, hosted them here at, at the university to get their degrees. Uh, we went from an enrollment of roughly, you know, between four and 5,000 students to 17,000 uh, students in two years, which was called the GI Bulge from 1944 to 1946. That Delta was made up of uh, World War II veterans. So you could see here how our campus was truly transformed. Uh, the uh, Chancellor Tully's uh, planning team reached out to the War Department, as we know today as the Department of Defense, and asked for some assistance. And you can see uh, we received uh, Quonset huts uh, to help house uh, our student veterans. Uh, they became makeshift uh, dining halls as well as makeshift classrooms. In the, in the center, the, the lower uh, photograph in the center there, you can see the Quonset huts uh just behind uh kraus college so our our tra our campus was truly transformed to to help with this this sudden bulge of uh of students on campus uh as a consequence of that decision it was a, it was a touch off point for a number of military connected programs that have stood the test of time here at syracuse university uh, we were one of the very first uh, universities to receive Air Force ROTC back in 1946. We were also uh, teaching the uh, Russian uh, language at the Defense Language School out on South Campus. Uh, in 1952, uh, the uh, Defense and, and previously the Army ROTC Comptrollership Program was born. Uh, in the Newhouse School, the military photojournalism program was stood up in 1963, a year before I was even born. Uh, and, and then the military motion media program in 1992. Both of those programs are housed in, in the Newhouse School for uh, public communications. And then the last uh, pro uh, prominent uh, program that stood up was in 1996, which is our National Security Studies program, which is a top off program for uh, for one, one star and senior SESs uh, to get sort of national security uh, view of what's going on uh, as they go into their, their first assignment as flag officers or senior executive service uh, officials. Um, fast forward to, to 2014, uh, this is our current uh, president and chancellor, Ken, uh, Chancellor Ken Severud, uh, in his inauguration speech in Henrik's Chapel. Uh, he laid out uh, his four strategic priorities for his chancellorship. Uh, he, it, the first three were uh, very academic in nature, uh, you know, increase the, uh, you know, the research uh, of, you know, the research uh, component of Syracuse University, uh, enhance the student experience. And the fourth a strategic priority was uh, to make Syracuse University the best place for veterans. Uh, Chancellor Severud wanted to and wants us to empower this generation of veterans and their families through higher education. And he wants Syracuse University to be that national exemplar in higher education. So to that end, uh, you know, the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, which focuses on the, the national mission of supporting transitioning service members and their families with a myriad of programs and you know in verification programs and entrepreneurship programs uh, they they're a huge touch point nationally as our veterans transition but the chancellor wanted to create an office on campus to do to take care of our uh, our student veterans and our military connected population so what came out of that discussion with me and, and Vice Chancellor Haney was the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs. Our office is uh, the single point of entry for, for anything that really looks like and feels like uh, military veterans, any programs or initiatives uh, come through our office and we do uh, collaborative work across campus, not only with our internal stakeholders, but also external stakeholders, both within the Syracuse community and nationally. Um, 
you know, so one of the very first things that, that we took a look at was our, was our enrollment. Um, you heard me say military connected students. So here at Syracuse University, we define uh, our, our military connected student population as our student veterans, our active duty guard and reservists, our Army and Air Force ROTC cadets, and then also our family members and dependents. So as you look at this slide uh, on the bottom portion of it, you see fall of 2015, we had a military connected uh, population uh, of 764 students on campus. But when the chancellor arrived just to the left of that in the fall of 2014, that number was in the high 200s, low 300s. Uh, the university uh, made an institutional investment to hire uh, veteran admission advisors. Uh, we've hired three of them. Scott Taylor heads that office along with Jessica Calhoun and Austin Bettinger. And over the course of the last five years, you can see that number steadily increasing uh, to 764 in 2015 to this past fall semester of 2019 to 1,375 students. So that's a little over a 500% increase in our military connected students over the course of the last five years. And, and our uh, three folks that, that work uh, as veteran admissions advisors have, have shouldered that burden and have done an extraordinary job in, in putting Syracuse University on the map. So there's a couple of things that we had to take a look at internally uh, to, to eliminate a number of barriers, uh, if you will. The first was to, to eliminate financial barriers, uh, specifically targeting, you know, having targeted financial aid and scholarship for, for our veterans and our military connected students and uh, our fundraisers. Paul Harris is one of them, Dan Bateman and, and Tina Caprell have done a, an outstanding job you know, fundraising for for our population. We also have uh, ROTC incentives. It, it was a barrier uh, up front. If uh, either a uh, Air Force or Army ROTC cadet received a national three or four year scholarship, the university picks up their room and board over the course of the three or four years that they're here. So. We looked about two years ago and we realized that we were losing some uh, very good uh, uh, cadets and prospective students. Uh, if they came to Syracuse University on a three year scholarship, uh, you know, they were looking at other universities because these other universities were actually offering free tuition and uh and fees for the first year the freshman year so we sat down with with the folks over in the financial aid office and we created an incentive whereby if you have a three-year scholarship army or air force rotc scholarship syracuse university will pick up the first year of tuition and fees for those students as well as their room and board uh, over the course of the last uh, two years, we've seen uh, roughly an increase between 30 and 40 more cadets coming into the freshman class, uh, and both in Army and Air Force ROTC. Uh, process barriers, I talked about making an institutional investment in our admissions advisors, but we also have uh, an Office of Veteran Success. You probably uh, have heard it before called the Veterans Resource Center. It's headed by Keith Doss. And, and a team of, of uh, VA uh, education, school certifying officials who certify that benefit each semester. We also uh, have early semester registration for all of our undergraduate uh, student veterans. So they can go in uh, before the semester starts, just like our student athletes, and they're able to go in and register for classes. And then uh, the other institutional investment uh, that we made was, was hiring a dedicated veteran uh, career services advisor, and that's Jennifer Pluta. Uh, Jennifer uh, had worked at, at the university for a little over 10 years. Uh, she's also a currently serving reservist, uh, uh, doing the same, uh, same work in, in the Army Reserves. Chancellor uh, turned to her and, and myself and Vice Chancellor Haney and charged us with 100% job placement 
of all graduating undergraduate student veterans six months after they um, after they graduate. And, and we're here to report over the last four years, Jennifer has uh, achieved a uh, hundred percent job placement. So you can see that that return on investment uh, with our veteran admission advisors and our career services uh, director uh, has really paid off very well for us. And that is a huge differentiator. There are very few, if I would probably say zero, institutions across the United States that have both of those uh, dedicated assets. Um, the other thing is we wanted to do is, is educate our, our faculty and staff. They ask us all the time, how can we help? We created what's called an orange door program. Uh, it's a, you take a cultural competency training, probably on a Saturday or Sunday, you can sit down over a cup of coffee or two, runs you th uh, through, uh, you know, a day in the life of a soldier, sailor, airman, or Marine, uh, the rank structure, some of the challenges that they go through while they're in the military, both themselves and their families. And then uh, when you complete that training, you reach out to our office and we provide you with a, a placard, which is part of the Orange Door program. It says Orange Door, you know, liaison. And so that tells our student veterans as they're walking through the university and they're in our college schools and colleges and our and our staff offices, if they walk by one of those placards, they know that somebody who's sitting behind that door has taken the time to understand them and they can knock on that door and walk in and sit down and have a conversation with them. Uh, and that person sitting down there has a general understanding of, of what it's like, uh, you know, for, for them to be a veteran. So really uh, a good program. Each of the schools and colleges uh, across the university are represented. We have a little over 145 or 150 uh, folks that are uh, participants in the Orange Door program. Uh, Vice Chancellor Haney uh, has tasked us to be to to create a sense of community here on campus, and so we've done that. Uh, we have a very very vibrant student veteran organization uh, that that's been here for for quite a number of years. Uh, we also have a student peer advising uh, group uh, as well. So th these are student vet veterans, excuse me, that uh, that uh, it's, it's almost like a sponsorship program. They they reach out early to those undergraduate student veterans that are coming to Syracuse and connect them to resources and ask, answer any questions that they may have. Uh, we also have a, uh, a, a veteran affinity group here at, at the university. We have a little over 200 faculty and staff that have uh, identified themselves as, as veterans. And so each month we, we meet. Uh, Jennifer Pluta, who, as I said earlier, is our uh, Director of uh, Veteran Career Services, she was voluntold <laughs> to, uh, by myself to, to head this group, and she's done an amazing job. Uh, and she gets a lot of great support from the other veterans uh, you know, that participate in this group, all volunteer. Uh, they do monthly meetings, uh, they do community service work, and uh, yet another way in how we build, uh, build community on campus. And then the last component is, is uh, athletics uh, partnership. Over the course of the past five years, uh, the OVMA has uh, created a, a magnificent partnership with, with SU Athletics. You can see the photos on the bottom of the slide. Uh, and just how how connected we are with with athletics. Uh, if you go to a Syracuse University home football game, you will see uh, a hometown hero being honored at at one of those games. Uh, our office coordinates all that with athletics as as well as each summer uh, Fort Drum. Uh, we have a great partnership with the 10th Division about about 70 miles north of us. And, uh, you know, each summer, the Syracuse University football team hosts a, a, a kids camp and, and, and we, you know, charter buses to bring children down to participate in this event for one day. And Coach Babers and the team really go above and beyond to, to make them feel very special and welcome. Uh, so what we do here internally uh, at, at the university, we leverage also partnerships nationally. And the first is the, uh, is the Pat Tillman Foundation. Uh, back in 2017, Syracuse University became one of 15 uh, university partners uh, of the Pat Tillman Foundation. Uh, so each year as a university partner, we are guaranteed one scholarship uh, for uh, one of our, our veterans, our active duty service members, or family member 
who uh, who apply uh, and actually uh, are selected for the scholarship uh, nationally by by the by the foundation. Over the course of the last uh, the, the last three years, we've had four uh, four uh, Tillman scholars. Uh, I'm happy to report we're in the we're in the 2020 process right now. Uh, this year we have five Syracuse University uh, students that have been selected to uh, 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 selected to the final round uh, of the uh, of the in-person interview or the virtual interview uh, by the uh, the Tillman Foundation National Board. So. So the, fir the first, uh, our first student actually had his, um, his interview a couple of days ago, and this is gonna happen over the course of the next couple of weeks. So we have our fingers crossed. Maybe we, we, should, we should go five for five here because I, I have to tell you, they're, they're all five are amazing, amazing students. All our graduate students, uh, either graduate student, law students. And then the last one is a Warrior Scholar Project. Uh, th this, is a, this is an academic boot camp uh, for transitioning uh, service members, primary enlisted service members, Syracuse, you know, you know they go through a one-week academic uh, boot camp here on campus, uh, the uh, College of Arts and Science, where, where Syracuse is a humanities school, so the College of Arts and Science uh, has, has taken the lead with us uh, to be able to provide the, uh, the, the, the professors and the instruction for this, uh, for this one-week boot camp. Uh, we're entering our sixth year with the Warrior Scholar Project, although because of COVID-19, uh, this year's uh, session uh, is going to be uh, a virtual uh, session versus a, uh, an, uh, an on-campus residence session. Um, and, and then the last, uh, last piece uh, is really focused uh, towards our active duty uh, guard and reservists. Uh, our university college and Dean Frasiello and the team down there are doing quite literally, uh, you know, yeoman's work uh, in in focusing on how to best serve our our active duty guard and reserve part time uh, students. Uh, Chancellor uh, Severud, along with Vice Chancellor Haney and and uh, Dean Frasiello. Uh, collaborated a little over a year and a half ago, and uh, what what came out of that was was the chancellor uh, directing that uh, any uh, active duty guard or reserve uh, you know service member who desires to uh, study part time uh, online at Syracuse University can. Uh, can, can enroll in that course at the Department of Defense tuition assistance program rate of $250 a credit hour. I mean, that is an amazing number. Again, all of this is, is gonna be delivered online. Uh, there's, uh, there's an associate in arts and liberal arts. That, that degree, uh, the, the, uh, the student can you know, either stay here at Syracuse and continue on uh, into a, a three other uh, bachelor's programs or a BA in liberal uh, liberal arts, uh, or you know if they decided to uh, transition here to Syracuse and go on main campus, maybe go over to Whitman or maybe in the College of uh, Computer Science and Engineering, uh, those those credits will transfer right into uh, to those to those programs or. If uh, a service member decides at Syracuse, even though they, they received their liberal arts uh, associate degree here at the university, decide not to uh, attend Syracuse as a transition or maybe go to the University of Iowa or the University of Florida, those, those credits will be able to transition uh, over uh, just fine. So a lot of great work uh, that's happening, online uh, offerings and degrees uh, are a priority, uh, you know, with the university right now, and, and it's been here uh, for about the past 18 months as uh, Dean Frostiel and the team are rolling this program out. Um, here is uh, what, what I would like to say, the, you know, the, the quintessential sim symbol of creating uh, a sense of community here at Syracuse University, the National Veterans Resource Center, uh, here at Syracuse University. The, uh, the uh, grand opening was supposed to happen on April 17th, but, but unfortunately the, 
COVID-19 actually, uh, and the, you know, virus uh, got a vote. And uh, so we had to cancel that, uh, that grand opening, but, but I'm here to report that, that very soon uh, we'll be announcing uh, a fall grand opening. We're still working through the eaches on that and uh, working with, uh, you know, the university and some of the key stakeholders on that opening. So you, all of us will be hearing something uh, very soon. Uh, th again, this is an amazing building. It, it sits on the corner of Waverly, South Krause, and Marshall Street. Uh, it takes up a whole a whole block where the former Hoople Hall used to uh, once uh, once sit. 115,000 square feet, uh, 750 seat auditorium. It has three uh, classrooms. Two of them are ROTC classrooms, and that's really important because now the ROTC programs. Uh, they, they take their names out of the registrar classroom uh, lottery, if you will. So now that ROTC has their own dedicated classrooms and they don't have to, they don't have to fight for registrar classroom space. But we also, you see there on the slide that we have one registrar classroom. It's a 50 seat classroom uh, down on the Marshall Street side. And uh, we deliberately put this, this registrar classroom in there because you know, this, this building is an academic building, and, and it, it says National Veterans uh, Resource Center, but we also, you know, we also are one university, and we want to open this, uh, this building up to all students uh, at the university. So we deliberately placed that registrar classroom in there to get uh, traditional students and those that are not veterans uh, circulating through that building. And right before the... Uh, before the coronavirus uh, uh, took us on in earnest in March, uh, you know, I was able to see a number of number of students. In fact, I saw our starting quarterback from the SU football team, Tommy Tommy DeVito, uh, taking a class down there, and saw him walking through the building as well as a couple of our our basketball players and lacrosse players and and others. So it's it's definitely getting uh, the traction. This building is uh, the most accessible building on campus. Uh, there are ramps. You can see the ramps here on the photos on the left. Uh, the only stairs in the building are emergency exit stairs. And to be able to get up onto the second and third floor, we have elevators on the east side of the of the building. Here are some of the um, some of the um, uh, renderings from the building. I'll take you from the from left to right, starting on the top, uh, sort of the top center. You see the Captain Floyd Ben Schwartzwalder Hall of Honor. Uh, we are going to have sort of a, you know, if you will, a mini museum of that will will uh, rep that will, you know, represent and show Syracuse University's history uh, related to the military and veterans and families. Uh, it'll start from World War One through World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, which is really important uh, piece of our history. And take us to current day, uh, present day of what we're doing in in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, it's named after uh, Ben Schwartzwalter. Many people probably know him as the national championship uh, football coach. Uh, you know, back back in the uh, back in the 50s. But uh, but Ben Schwartzwalter was also a, a captain uh, in the 82nd Airborne Division. He was a company commander and jumped into Normandy during D-Day. And, uh, you know, he it was the recipient of uh, a number of a couple of silver stars and purple hearts and bronze stars with uh, V device for valor. So uh, very apropos that that this uh, Hall of Honor is named after him. You can see the Grand Hall on the right uh, there. It's in a, the configurations in a uh, in a banquet hall type setting, but it's a multi use space. So when it's not being used for a banquet hall, there's going to be there's soft seating in there. We've actually held a couple of events in there, one of which was a veteran affinity group meeting. Uh, down in the center, you can see our ROTC classrooms. The ROTC actually was was using that uh, using the, the classrooms. We we all started to move in, and, and all of us are moved in in uh, in in in, uh, in January uh, of 2020. So uh, we you know the ROTC was able to use uh, their classrooms as well as our our student veterans were able to use the lounge. Uh, down in the lower left-hand corner, you can see the IVMF main conference room. Uh, I would like to say that it has the million-dollar view of campus. Uh, as you look out uh, onto, you know, from, from the IVMF main conference room, 
it's it's in the southwest it has a southwest facing view so you could see all of Krauss college and the carrier dome and the maxwell school and you could see the tully building it has an amazing view uh, but here that you can see it's in a it's in a boardroom configuration and then the, the photo just to the right of it is is in, in a workshop again a multi-use space uh, the auditorium is named after uh, Dr. K.G. Tan, who's a, who uh, graduated uh, with his Ph.D. from the uh, from the College of uh, of Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, Dr. Tan is not military connected whatsoever, but Dr. Tan became very interested uh, in the work that we were doing here on campus, and is a is a is a champion of what we were doing here on campus, and and gifted five million dollars to name the uh, the auditorium after you know he and his family. And then on the right, you can see the parade ground, yet another nice multi-use space. Yes, that is real grass, and there is real grass up on the parade ground. I was just there uh, last week, and uh, very green and, and uh, uh, luscious grass. Uh, great sight lines up onto, uh, onto campus. Uh, I would also like to say that we'll probably have the best marching uh, Army and Air Force ROTC cadets and lieutenants in the nation uh, by using this parade ground. Um, so our current state here, so, you know, as you all know, uh, we we started, uh, you know, with with COVID-19 and, and started, you know, moving uh, our, uh, our academic offerings online. And as a consequence of that, you know, the staff started to uh, work remotely uh, beginning on uh, on March 17th, uh, you, you know, currently right now uh, we have five of our student veterans that have been activated uh, in the National Guard and Reserve uh, to support uh, the New York New York State's uh, COVID response. Um, one of the gentlemen here on the left, if you see that photo, just to the far right, you see three uh, three soldiers uh, on the. Right. Uh, the the soldier in the center there that's that staff sergeant Will Will, Will Harrington uh, he's got a class of 21 he was one of the first to be activated with the National Guard uh, one of the one of the biggest um, you know concerns that our that our veterans had actually was actually nationally was uh, you know their what how how and if and when were their VA education benefits going to be impacted because of COVID-19 and this transitioning into a into a virtual learning environment, uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of traffic about this uh, at a national level and in a regional level. But Syracuse University was ready. Syracuse University uh, is registered and certified with the Veterans Administration to be able to offer uh, academic programs online. So our transition for our uh, all of our military connected students, specifically our student veterans who are on the post 9/11 GI Bill or other VA education benefits, were seamless. Uh, we had our our student veteran organization. You know the 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 leadership there was being asked a number of questions, as was our um, our uh, our Office of Veteran Success, as well as our our PAVE advisors and. Uh, you know, our, our students were not at all affected by that transition. Uh, as I talk transition, uh, you know, all of us, uh, you know, on uh, here on campus, our, our staff uh, organizations had to, had to transition virtually. Our both Lauren Pylon and myself had to, and you know, our admissions team, Scott, Jessica, and and Austin had to do the same. And our career services and the you know, the Office of Veteran Success all transitioned very seamlessly, and we're providing the set, that same level of support to our students as if we were looking at them face-to-face -face on campus in a resident setting. Um, I'd also like to say, too, that, uh, you know, as, as part of this, we tried to make, you know, the events that were happening here on campus as, as meaningful as possible. Uh, we, as you all know, uh, the you know the, comm the the commencement on campus was canceled, and and as a consequence of that, so was our student veteran commencement, and ROTC commissioning ceremony was canceled, and so uh, we we transitioned those events online. So our student veteran uh, uh, commencement, we didn't do a commencement ceremony, but we created a video with the vice chancellor and uh, 
We had a guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel retired Teresa Cross, who's a 99 grad uh, from Syracuse University and an ROTC alum. She has a long lineage of family, both immediate and extended, who are SU alums. Uh, she was our guest speaker. If you get an opportunity, look on one of our uh, our uh, social media platforms and listen to her uh, words of wisdom to the class. And then the ROTC is is doing their commissioning ceremonies virtually. Last Friday, Air Force commissioned four cadets virtually that I was able to watch, and then tomorrow. They're going to finish up uh, the, the last two. They have six total. And then on on May 19th, uh, Army ROTC is going to commission 19 uh, cadets to become second lieutenants in the Army uh, on, on, on the 19th. So we have uh, 25 uh, cadets that are being commissioned this year. So uh, that's all I have right now. Uh, you know, I'll certainly take any questions in the, in the chat room. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, what, what the OVMA is doing, uh, you see our, um, our website there, veterans.syr.edu. So I'll pause right there and uh, turn it back over to, uh, to Paul. Thank you, Ron. Great job detailing the OVMA. Um, so we've got time for some questions if people want to enter those into the chat. Um, we've got a few here, and the, uh, the first one is um, probably one that you're asked a lot, Ron, which is uh, how can I help the OVMA? So really, there's three ways for everybody who's listening in, in which to, to be able to, to help the OVMA. The first, the first uh, I think, is, is, is really easy, which is to be an ambassador for, for the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs. And, and, and be able to tell our story, uh, tell the story of the university, tell, talk about its rich history, uh, and be an ambassador uh, for the work that we're doing here on campus. Um, you know, the, the, the second piece to this, I think, would be, you know, uh, really two part uh, on, on number two, which would be one, uh, help us uh, connect as, as you're out there and there's a lot of people that, that are that are listening in uh, you know connect uh, prospective students you might come across a, a student vet or a family member or a, a young uh, a young 17 or 18 year old uh, high school senior who's thinking about going to ROTC you know connect those students back here to Syracuse University and our amazing uh, admissions team of Scott and Jessica and, and Austin and that they will get them. Uh, squared away and brought on to, you know, brought back here to Syracuse University where, as you can see, there's a plethora of, of great uh, programs uh, for them. And then the other piece uh, to this would also to be able to use your networks uh, to connect our, our student veterans and our military connected students to jobs and internships. Um, I think that's really important, especially now as you know uh there's a lot of uncertainty with with covid 19 and its impacts i think it's even more important for those networks to to help us and then you know the last piece i'd be remiss not to to bring this up but uh, to to also hope that you would consider you know providing an unrestricted gift to to the veteran legacy fund and the work that we're doing here uh all the money that that, that we receive from our generous donors goes back into the program goes back into supporting all those military connected students on campus and uh, it's amazing to watch them come in as either freshmen or maybe sophomore standing as a student veteran or or as a freshman in ROTC and watch them graduate and walk across the stage. And it's because of the generosity of all of our donors in the VLF that make that happen. All right. Uh, another one is, uh, how are the needs of military connected students different from the rest of the Syracuse student body? Now, that's a that's a very very good question. You know, there, there there's a number of uh, there there are a number of different needs. I I think first and foremost, uh, you know, you have transitioning service members that that have to make a decision on on where to go to when they transition. There there's three areas in which they have to you know the Department of Defense sort of steers them when they go through their transition assistance uh, training. The first is you know to get a, find a job. Uh, the second would be uh, to become an entrepreneur and, uh, you know, in, in business ownership. And then the third would be higher education. So, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, big uh, decision to make to come to higher education. Uh, as they transition here to higher education, you know, the, there are a number of barriers. 
uh, that we have first and foremost is creating that sense of community, you know, uh, veterans, uh, you know, as, as, as they, when they're in the military have that sense of community. And so they're looking for that same sense of community when they, when they arrive here at the university. So, you know, having a vibrant student veterans organization and a paved program, uh, is really important uh, during transition and assimilating them onto onto campus, and then to have a one-stop shop like the National Veterans Resource Center and and our Office of Veteran Success, where you just go to one place to be able to to get your uh, veterans uh, your Veterans Administration Education benefits certified, and 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 to have someone like uh, Jennifer. Uh, on on the back end of all this, in the, in the you know in the uh, life cycle of a student, to be able to to have a dedicated career services person, so you know those needs are 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 there. Uh, you know they're very important. Um, they're uh, you know and and a lot of them are national national barriers that that we see in higher education, uh, and 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 actually barriers that that we as as a university have taken on and done a good job of knocking down and and resourcing our students for success what about employment services for veteran grads talk to that a little sure i could talk about that um uh you know as i said jennifer jennifer runs lead on that she does an amazing job collaborating across campus with all the other schools and colleges um, so not only does she work with, with student veterans and, you know, maybe ROTC cadets who maybe are not going on active duty, but they're also, you know, they, they might be a reserve or guardsman. Uh, you know, she works with them on, on uh, you know, achieving appointment as well. Um, I, I think what's, what's really critical there is, is, is internships. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a barrier right now that our student veterans uh, it's a national barrier, frankly, um, and and our student veterans uh, right now we have roughly on any one given year about 10% of our student veterans, uh, undergraduate student veterans, actually go out and participate uh, in internships. Uh, a lot of that has to do with you know financial need. Uh, you know they have families here at, at the university. Uh, they ha they have a housing allowance that they that they get from the from the VA. As part of their post 9/11 GI Bill, and and what's linked to that is having to take classes full time. If they don't take classes full time, then it impacts their housing allowance. Therefore, if they go out on a on an internship, it becomes you know becomes a pretty big financial uh, challenge for them. Same holds true for single uh, veterans. Uh, you know they have they have a you know a house or an apartment that they're holding on here, and then they have to go to to do an internship. The majority of our um, our um, our student veterans go to one of three areas, Washington D.C., New York City, or Boston, to uh, to take on their internship. Uh, all high cost areas, so uh, a lot of those uh, employers don't pay uh, a stipend. Some do, some don't. If they do pay a stipend, it's very small. Uh, some are just credit bearing internships, so you can kind of see where. You know, a lot of our a lot of our veterans will just uh, not consider uh, taking on an internship. Uh, right now, we have a, a number of veterans, uh, student veterans that that are participating in internships, but they're going to be virtual uh, internships, which is a good news story because our employers know that at some point, you know, the coronavirus will pass. At some point, we don't know when, but uh, our our employers uh, that that. You know, we have great working relationships with want to keep those pathways open. Uh, and then as far as the, uh, you know, the, the uh, you know, job placement, uh, Jennifer reaches out early uh, when our student veterans uh, and our military connected students get here and starts work. They, she starts working with them on their on their resume, on getting their LinkedIn profile taken care of. Uh, and then gets them in front of employers in a, in a, in a host of uh, networking events. And then she does career immersion events as well. Uh, we've been to Washington, D.C. We've been to New York City. We've actually been to Los Angeles, which was in January, right before uh, COVID uh, you know, took over the nation. And uh, we were going to do one in the, over the spring semester in Boston, but that got canceled uh, as well. Uh, but we certainly, uh, if anybody has any other questions or you know, this is a passion for them and they want to connect with us and Jen myself and Jennifer and others, 
we can certainly do that. Ron, this is a question from Mike. This might be a trick question. Um, is that a picture of an F-16 on your wall? No, uh, I, it is not uh, an F-16. Everything in this office is Army-centric. It is not Air Force-centric, and it won't be. But thanks, Vice Chancellor. I appreciate you uh, coming on and, and supporting us. I think he's trying to push a button there. All right. Well, I think that's it for questions for today. We want to thank everybody for joining. Really appreciate you taking the time. Ron, thank you. Good job as always. And if there are any other questions we can offer, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. And uh, when we have the uh, NVRC open, we would love to walk you through it and uh, have you there as our guest. I want to thank everybody for coming today. And uh, hopefully we'll get to do this again. Thanks so much.